Hi there, this is Andrew Brody with Yokogawa, and today I'd like to talk to you about Yokogawa's Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition Package, Fast Tools. In particular, I'm going to focus in on the trending capabilities as well as the historical subsystem that comes with Fast Tools. So, what we're seeing on screen right now is a standalone trending package that can peer into kind of re real time and historical data that's in the Fast Tools system. When you install Fast Tools, it'll show up under the Fast Tools directory as the trend module. It also comes in an embeddable format that you can embed into your full blown SCADA applications. And here's an example running in one of our demo SCADA apps. So it's got real-time trending. I can pop out kind of more of a faceplate just so if I have multiple monitors, I can kind of organize my screen a little better. But uh, let's go back to the standalone package here and kind of take a look at some of its capabilities. So what we can see is on the left-hand side, I've got kind of a value scale zoom capability. On the bottom, I've got a time zoom capability. I can also, right along here, is kind of my time bar. I can kind of show exactly what I'm looking at. So I can kind of go last day, go ahead, take a look at that. We can kind of see, hey, this is when I was recording yesterday. This is when I was recording today. I could switch back to that last hour, go ahead, zoom in on it. Could also kind of switch to a real time so it's kind of going off the absolute latest data that happens to be in the system. I can also do stuff like left click and drag and I can do zooms. I can right click on the screen, zoom. I can do zoom out or I can go ahead fit in window. Over here I've got my legend. I can kind of click on these and on the left hand side I can turn off the scales. Also by selecting one of these it can change what my cursor is showing. And if we take a look down here right in this column we can kind of see it's actually showing for all the pens but in particular the pen that it's scanning on right now was the one I last picked here. Okay, other things that can be done. I can right click. I can get rid of legend, value slider, time slider, time control, even stuff like the hairline if I want to get rid of that. I can go ahead and copy trend image to clipboard. I can export the trend image as a uh, PNG or JPEG file. I can export all the trend data as a comma separated variable file. I can go ahead and export all the data as an XML file. I can also get deep into tweaking the trend capabilities. If I go to trend properties, I can do stuff like give it a name, description, change its appearance, all the little things about it, how it's being rendered, 3D or oblique, 3D orth orthographic, as a table, under pens. If I pick these guys here, it really opens up all the possible things that I can change on the pens. If I want to kind of see them as a more of a scatter diagram, I can show it that way. If I want to do stuff like turn on grids, I can turn on grids, header footer, legend, time axis, time range. Say I want to kind of see two hours instead of the last one hour. And go ahead, hit two, apply there, three, back to one. So that's kind of where you can really tweak how much you're taking a look at. Update interval can go automatic or every one second. Pen panel, this will show what columns are available down here. 
Also, if you hover on some of these, it'll actually sometimes kind of tell you exactly what you're looking at there if there happens to be something set for it. Uh, if I want to add a pen, I can click here. And then it's going to show me all my items that are available. And go ahead, add that in. So, added this guy in. Let's see, I can uh, go ahead, do an update on it, and we can see that there is that brand new pen I just added in. If I want, I can right click on it, and I can go ahead and delete that pen. I can also choose to export the pen data, and then it'll go ahead and send it out as a comma separated variable file. So that's kind of some of the neat capabilities. So the stuff I've shown you all around the screen here, a lot of that's available from up here. So I can go ahead, look at it in 3D ways. This little tool here, I can turn it off by hitting this guy here. But over here, this just kind of allows me to tweak just about every every possible aspect of viewing that guy in 3D. And of course I can kind of move back to this area here. So if I want to protect my workspace, I can do that here. I can actually have multiple trends on the screen at the same time. If so, then I can go ahead and tile them, do that. Other thing I can do is I can record my interactions on the screen here, should I choose to. And then at that point, I can also go ahead and do a playback on it through the viewer. And then that uh, is good for training purposes and stuff like that. And then, of course, uh, your help and contact sensitive help. So that pretty much covers the trend application. On top of trending, we also have uh, XY trending. Should you want to do, say, something like a pressure temperature or some type of power wind curve or something like that. Let's take a quick look at an example of uh, maybe what the uh, power wind curve might look like. So I think we have that here under uh, power, wind, and uh, power curve. And this is just showing an example of uh, XY type plotting or trending capabilities. So we also have this available for you as well as part of the data analysis historical. Okay. So we've seen how we can look at the data. How about we take a look at how we can actually set it up. So this is the engineering module. To get to that, Fast Tools. Of course, Fast Tools actually has to have been started. And then you pick the engineering module here. And uh, the setup is uh, fairly linear from top to bottom. First thing you're going to do is you're going to set up your communications to the equipment. That consists of setting up a line. This is essentially the communication pathway to the particular unit you're talking to. And then the next is station. This is actually the particular unit on your communication line. And then the last thing you're going to do under each station is set up the items. Now one of the things that's critical to data logging is uh, kind of knowing how fast you're going to be pulling the data out on the instrument. And uh, let me show you where that's set up. So under the particular station, if I look at uh, properties here, if I go under options, you're going to see the scan intervals. And there's uh, slow, medium, and fast. Uh, these are very important because when you go ahead and do an item, you're going to pick one of these intervals. And you're not going to be able to log any faster than you're scanning. And in this case, for say this particular interval, you can see I'm doing a slow scan type. Now, one of the ones that I know I was kind of showing you on the screen there was sign point. This guy's fast, so if we kind of flash back to a previous uh, where I was showing you at the time, the fast was actually at 1,000 milliseconds or one second, so you're going to be able to see that there. So right here, this just shows that we've actually set up communications to a particular point. Next thing we know, we're going to need to do is go ahead and add it to an item. So 
we can go ahead and do stuff like add an installation. So the first level is installation. Let's get rid of some of these on the screen here. Okay, after you do an installation, you can add a unit. These are just ways of organizing your points. And then after that, you can add an item. Okay, so in this particular case, I've gone ahead and added an item. Now let's take a look at parts that are going to be interesting to you about the item. One of the uh, biggest things is going to be your uh, scale, high and low limits down here, scale. And then the other thing is going to be this pit filter. Let's do a uh, help on the pit filter. Think of this as kind of like a way of setting dead bands around the particular item. So this really allows you to do a little smarter data logging because one of the things that you're going to show when uh, I show you how to set up the historical data logging is you can say pass the pit filter. And so this pit filter can kind of show you some conditions about when it's actually worth doing a historical data logging. So for example, changed a certain amount in a certain amount of time, that would be set up through the pit filter. Okay, so we set up the line, station, unit, items, gone through here, set up these items here. Next thing we're going to need to do is go down to historization. And essentially we're going to go ahead and add here, and this will add a storage group. When we add a storage group, let's take a look at event here. One of the things that we're actually going to do for it is we're going to go under this collection storage attributes and you're going to say, how am I collecting? And in this case, event item is going to open up underneath the actual items certain things that we can store based on. And remember I was talking about the pit filter? This is where we can kind of pick that pit filter to allow you to do storage based on certain uh, kind of dead bands and uh, values exceeding certain uh, measures over time. Okay. Let's go back to uh, this here quickly. For the storage group, we can do some uh, interesting things. So when we create it, we can say to activate it immediately. We can say when to kind of roll over the first file. I could go ahead and say immediately and then that's going to start collecting my first file or I can kind of say at some point in the future. Deactivation time, I can have that as infinite which means it'll essentially never turn off. If I were to no longer pick infinite I could kind of pick a specific date that I could stop collecting. How often I'm going to create a file every day. How long I'm going to keep those files. So in this case I'm going to keep it for a week and then uh, essentially I can do a uh, warning time as well so I kinda can let you know before I get rid of stuff. Collection storage attributes, I can do stuff like data compression, store quality code if it's available. Those are probably the uh, major things that you need to look there. Okay, And uh, let's see over here once again storage units, this is just how many of those data files it's gone ahead and collected. Now beyond uh, event item storage groups you can also do time-based storage groups and so these are kind of the more traditional so let's take a look here so there's a storage group here a time-based one once again all the scheduling information looks similar to what we looked at but if we go under here we can see that it's based on scan time and scan interval one second so this is really only going to be useful if the points that are underneath it are actually being uh, measured once a second from the device and remember where I kind of showed you the fast scan time up top that was at a uh, thousand milliseconds so this would be a compatible scan rate for that particular item okay so we have storage groups we can do event or we can do time-based storage groups we can put the items underneath it and then once I pick an actual item 
I can pick what I want to store, like its value, high limit, low limit. There's a dead band, can go ahead and collect that information as well. And although I'm not going to get into it here, here's the reporting section. This is covered uh, as part of the report fast capability of fast tools. This allows you to get into much more uh, intensive views of the data, particularly filtering out, comparing stuff, just about anything that you could do with a SQL Server, with a database type query engine, you can do through the reporting package, but we'll cover that at a later date. So this is uh, the review of the historical system of Fast Tools, as well as its training capability. This is Andrew Brody with Yokogawa. I hope this has been informative. Take care and have a great day.